It is loud and it is wet as we welcome you inside Century Link Field on a patented rainy afternoon in Seattle, Washington. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Chicago Bears. They'll start with the option. Yeah, that's not the start that he was looking for as he's going to be met and dropped behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers point their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Takes it to the 26 just a one-yard gain. Tackled at the 20. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Steps away. He may try and run for this. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. Oh, fourth down. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now first and 10 at their 38. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. Carson the first down and more. And finally brought down at the 43. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Akeem Hicks at 6'5", 332, finds his way home for the sack. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson, they'll run the screen with Carson. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Khalil Mack in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Flushed out right. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. I thought he did a pretty good job there to get back what he could, but let's face it, that sack on second down, talk about throwing a wrench into the works. It certainly did. Yeah, he did everything he could there, trying to pick up some positive yardage, and he did, but not enough. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears.
That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And the Bears take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. The tackle made by K.J. Wright. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left in no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second and nine, Trubisky. He was trying to find Anthony Miller there, and it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Trubisky, and he completes it to Cohen. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. A three-yard loss, fourth down now. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it, any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at the 41-yard line. He gives it off to Carson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain on the play. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. And he finds his man, the tight end Olson. That went good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Now Wilson. Now they go screen. It's complete. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Powerful running, and he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. 35 yards that time on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Pressure comes, he's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Yeah, and we yeah, say it all the time, you have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Throwing on second and long, Trubisky. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. And it's third down. Out of the
the gun. Trubisky. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call. But for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. A throw on the quick slant, going to be complete. And they'll get this down to the 10. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and try to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Following the penalty, Montgomery. And he'll get four there, down to about the 12-yard line. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. On second and 11 now. Trubisky forced out to his left. He's going to take off with it. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Trubisky now to throw on third down. They'll roll. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Bears have taken the early lead. Well, that's what you want to see from your quarterback when it's a goal line situation. A guy who's not afraid to tuck the ball, give his body up, and get into the end zone. That ought to inspire his entire team. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. Seahawks, nothing. After the touchdown on is Pat O'Donnell to send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. rolling to his right now he'll pull it down he'll get eight on the scramble there it'll be second and a couple partner he was going through his progressions not there not there after about the third one he decided he better pull it down and run for it and he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure here's a second and two now from the 33 
Wilson going to fake the give and keep it himself. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. On third down. Carson, and this will be a Seahawks first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. On first down, Wilson. And now he'll, Wilson hit, it's loose, it's out, fumble. And this is picked up by the Bears. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Recovered by Chicago. Draw play here, Trubisky gives to Cohen. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Next receivers have spread the defense out, and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. They'll run on second down with Cohen, and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Nothing. The Bears on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. The ball carrier. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery, and he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Out of the gun, running with Cohen. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. This defense is really thrown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Trubisky will throw. He'll buy some time. Now Trubisky lost the football, and the Seahawks have recovered. Trubisky on the keeper. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys who have to touch the ball and carry it, they're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. That second down play nets a minus four. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. And the Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. To throw is Wilson. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. 
Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. His throw caught right around the six. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. From 19 yards away. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total. But all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. the game at seven. Turn. Here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. At their own. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Bears on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Now it's Trubisky. He'll get that complete to the tight end, Harris. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Returnable for Lockett. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And out will come the offense as they take over. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. 
He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. To throw again on second down. Wilson throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Will Disley, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Now Wilson on first down. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way, and it's much more successful as well. They'll run on first down. It's Carson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Looking for the tight end, Olsen, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Danny Trevathan. And he'll get this back across the midfield, striping down to the 47-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. Got a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Cody Barton. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. And this will be a long field goal if the skies were clear, but here in the rain and the elements, they'll go for it on fourth. They'll try and throw for it with Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. Trubisky. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. How about them biting off 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive? Trubisky. 
And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Gill. But it'll be second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Here's Trubisky to throw. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Trubisky to throw again. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds. And now fourth down. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. This one fielded at the five. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And you figure, Charles, they have enough time here in the first half, more than a minute, to put a drive together, at least get them in position to try a field goal. Yeah, they've got all three timeouts at their disposal, so I'm actually thinking bigger. With those three timeouts, that amount of time on the clock, I'm thinking about trying to get a touchdown and settle for a field goal. <laughs> Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Khalil Mack able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. to throw on second down. Wilson, and an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. On third down. Carson, and he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line well short of the first down marker. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 
So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Onto the field now come the Bears. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. The Chicago offense set to get started. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield, those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. Trubisky's pass, intended for Anthony Miller, incomplete. Brings up second and 10 at the 22-yard line. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Throwing here, Trubisky. Caught on the left side by Ginn. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. It's a gain of two yards, and it's third down. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37. This is up and good from Pinheiro. And that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Will Disley. Will Disley, the intended receiver. And it's second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Probably you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete. Pass. I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. He didn't 
didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Instead of a third and four, now they have to manage a third and nine after the delay of game. From the gun, it's Wilson. Underneath, he's got Olsen. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Two veterans there, Wilson to Olsen for a Seattle first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. And now he's going to use his legs. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. On second down, it's Carson. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 15 yards on the play, first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. He finds Ursua. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively, but they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the 9 to the 8. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. Here's second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. They follow up the first down one-yard run with a minimal gain of two. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here. Brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick. Throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Eddie Goldman with a sack. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. field goal, a 26-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. 
Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Brennan in with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. That's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. On first and 10, it's Trubisky. Out to his left. He's going to take off with it. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. And just a yard to go here on second down. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Four yards, the pickup, first down. First down, Chicago. On the draw, this is Cohen. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Going the ball. Jamal Adams coming up from his safety spot to make the play. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing on second and eight, Trubisky and quickly into the hands of Robinson. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. And that one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Trubisky. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Here's Trubisky. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Now he steps away. He can run for it, and he will. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this one? Both of these guys running the ball well. Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. It's brought in right side by Ginn. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. 
A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last run, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. A 27-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. from the six. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you gotta like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, right? Yeah, a little tired, and if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. On second and nine, Wilson, he finds his man, the tight end Olsen. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. On third down. Carson, and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. So just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. On first down, Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. A, six a gain of six there on first. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. 
Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? Now Wilson on first down. Slide. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Bears. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their 38. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Ball carrier. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second down now, it's Cohen. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Second and five now, Trubisky, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Eddie Goldman picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. On second down. It's Carson, and he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup to get him back to the original line of scrimmage with third down coming up. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Seahawks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. Here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. 
Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Now here's Michael Dixon standing just outside his own goal line. Call that a punt of 38 yards officially. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10 at their own 44. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. One of the best of the last decade or so, Bobby Wagner in to bring him down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On second down now. It's Cohen, and some room to maneuver. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 23 yards the pick up there. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. The throw complete, Trubisky to Miller. Seven yards, the pick up there. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. Gets this to his running back, Tariq Cohen. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now, with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. He was Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. I love those plays. Fourth and one, that's who wants it more, this time the offense. Yeah, there's a lot of hooting and hollering in there, right? A lot of contact and a lot of collisions as they try and find some space. Who's going to drop their hips, gain leverage, and move the other side backwards? We saw it there for the offense getting it done. First down, a run with Cohen. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Again, it's Cohen. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. They're handling things up front. And it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys in the perimeter blocking downfield and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air's... Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they are going to get this one back, it looks like. So, nearly like for like fumbles, but they hang on to this thing and keep it a turnover. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. On the carry. The 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 10-yard line. Four yards remain for second down. They'll roll him out right. He'll try and run it. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now Wilson. Rolling to his right. He'll run it. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. The throw complete to Dorsett, and they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. Pardon, you gotta like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. Wilson to throw. He'll buy some time right, and he's going to keep it here. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. From the 37, they work on second and six. Throwing now is Wilson. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Back to throw. They'll run the screen with Carson. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. He's going to let it fly. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 13 seconds remaining. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. Thank you. 
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Seattle, so long, everybody.